The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. as we kick off the trading week. Hope you at all. Uh, hope you all had a nice long weekend. We kick things off. Talk about some volatility to kick things off in a big way. We get the S&Ps right back to basically where we were on Friday's lows before you accelerated into higher territory to close out the day. You get the S&Ps trading down 44 points right now. You're talking about almost a full percent in the red, trading at 46.10. You get the NASDAQ 100 down 1.5% this morning. We got yields rising. You have Microsoft out there buying Activision to the tune of almost 70, $70 billion uh, as they buy that game maker. Dow down 296 points. You're talking about eight tenths percent in the red and the Russell down eight tenths percent as well. Bitcoin down about 1600 bucks over the weekend, trading at 41,430. You have crude rising to above $85 briefly uh, on some economic activity out there. You got crude back to 8442 this morning. You got gold up about 90 cents. Check out that volatility on gold down to 1806. We're back up to 1820. We're sitting at 1817 in the gold contract and the all important notes and bonds. You're talking about a 10 year right now. Where are we? Let me pull this one up. Excuse me. Uh, we're talking about a 10 year right now that is negative 16 ticks. You see the action. You talk about where we are. Now you had bonds. Technically, uh, I guess we're talking about open yesterday, right? But no real action. You're down 16 ticks right now. You're talking about a yield on the 10 year 1.83%. 1.83%. We kicked the year off on the 10-year at about 1.5%, 1.83, talking about a two-year high on the yield on the 10-year. The 30-year is negative 28 ticks at 154.15, and we jump over to the volatility index this morning. The VIX spiking to 2161. Is this market not done pulling back just yet? We take a look at the S&Ps. Now, you see the trend line on the bottom part here. It bounced nicely on that trend line on Friday, got just below that trend line on Monday. We take a look at the longer term action of that trend line on a three year weekly. This trend line is talking about basically right at the COVID lows. Now, you are again slightly below that trend line right now on the S&Ps. We're going to put it back to a daily so you can see a little bit more clarity of that trend line. You can see pretty well defined. You've gotten above it. You've gotten below it a couple occasions. Uh, you know, you want to zoom in on the action. I mean, you're talking about a trend line from October, maybe the upper portion of that trend line. I mean, if you draw another line in here for a trend within a trend, maybe you have a little bit lower ceiling to that trend. But nonetheless, you can see from where we were in October, you bounced nicely in early December. You bounced nicely on December 20th. We got a bounce there last Monday and we are back below that level on the S&Ps. Now, the Qs. A little bit of a different channel line we're talking about, but still pretty important action in terms of where we were, where we are. Now, this morning, you do not have the queues open yet. Futures are open right now, so they have a daily bar on the chart. This daily bar not existing yet. Point being, when we open, we're going to open at about 375, and you see the action. I mean, that is Friday's bar, and you're going to open almost right at the low of Friday's bar. Not a good sign for the market there, considering uh, you get a bounce to 390, and just like that, we're opening below 375. Folks, we were trading at 389.47 on Thursday, and we are going to open at 374.79 in the queues this morning. Quite a move up there, and there's your 15 minute action for the queues to 374 from about 380 on Friday's close, and there's your action on Thursday, up to almost 390. All right, over in Europe right now, negative action as well. We get the DAX down about 9 tenths percent, FTSE down about half a percent, CAC roll down about 8 tenths percent over in Asia, Nikkei down about a third of a percent, Shanghai positive, uh, Hong Kong HSI, Hang Seng, excuse me, down 4 tenths percent. Okay, let's jump over to some of the FANG stocks. We get the NASDAQ 100 down 1.4%. Microsoft, <clears throat> they're going to open down, what is it, not bad, 2%, 2%, 2 2.5% right now. What are you down? You're down about 4 bucks right now, so just more than 1%. You see the volatility. Uh, Activision, quite a different story over there. 
ATVI is their symbol, excuse me. And there's a pop for you from 65 to 90. Now, the interesting thing here is these gaming stocks have had quite a pullback recently that Microsoft's just getting this equity at what it traded at about six months ago, right? July 26. Now, fair market value for this equity is not $90 in the market as of Friday. It's $65. So they're paying quite a premium to investors. But it is important to note that you had Activision trading at the levels Microsoft's buying them at for basically six months of the beginning of last year, and you almost got up to that price level. You got to a high of 87.83 in August of last year. So quite a pullback for Activision. They're getting quite a premium. Let's jump over to the headline to kick things off. Microsoft nears $77 billion deal for video game maker Activision. All cash. Gotta love that. Now, they uh, their biggest game, Call of Duty, probably recognize that name even if you're not in gaming at all it's a big one call of duty franchise uh it's going to be the tech giant's largest ever takeover people with the knowledge of the matter said could be announced as soon as today and uh not quite announced just yet but nonetheless gaming quite a consolidation when you look at microsoft what they'll be doing now i've been talking about virtual reality a lot since uh christmas since i got oculus 2 from meta and I imagine you're going to see this sector solidify even more. And maybe this is a play of Microsoft trying to make sure that they are entrenched in the gaming community as the technology ramps up and as they um, start trying to come out with whatever it is that we advance in the future. The reach that they're going to have controlling uh, Call of Duty. I mean, you know, the Xbox, etc. They're building quite an ecosystem in the Xbox. And you know that they're going to be competing with Amazon. Uh, excuse me, with Meta and with Apple um, for the VR headsets that are coming out. It's just a matter of time. If Xbox is going to be a competitor, gaming is going VR, they're buying one of the biggest players out there with Activision, Call of Duty, quite a franchise that they have there. And $70 billion, not bad. I mean, Activision, take a look at the Analyze tab. We jump down to the fundamentals. You're talking about a company as of the close of Friday. Would that be right? No, these are, this is calculated on the print that we have going this morning, I believe, market cap. Yes, it is, because they're buying them for $70 billion, and right now you value it at $68.4 billion as per these prices. But yeah, quite a haircut in terms of what, uh, a bonus in terms of what they were pushing on Friday. You know, it makes me think of my dad and I, we were talking about recently when Netflix started to talk about that they are going to get into gaming. Now, here's another one that's had quite a pullback. Netflix is going to open down seven bucks in the open to about 518. You're deep back into this consolidation Netflix had going from June of 2020, 2020, June of 2020. Uh, I mean, crazy. You're going to open in prices that you were trading at June of 2020 on Netflix, right back in that consolidation with the lower boundary about five, uh, excuse me, 480, the upper boundary about 560. You're going to open about 520. But I remember Reed Hastings and Netflix talking about that they are going to get into gaming. And one of the first things I said, we were talking about it, is that gaming is not an area that you can just spend money and achieve success. Uh, much less so, probably, than movie and film and show production. I mean, you have enough of a budget. You make a good enough movie. Maybe you have 100 million bucks, right? You make a $100 million movie. Uh, if you have the skill set and you have the right people involved and you make a good movie, it'll probably be successful. Not exactly the same deal with gaming because of the way that you have to uh, get entrenched in those fan bases. Maybe Netflix will be going out and purchasing someone. That's kind of what we started talking about. We'll finish this up and we'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 46 points right now, jumping back too. So the conversation, just to, to bring it about, uh, Microsoft purchasing Activision, the maker of Call of Duty, $70 billion, their biggest purchase ever. Uh, Netflix, they are trying to get into gaming. And you can't just spend to get into gaming. So just keep that in mind as these big players trying to get into gaming. Uh, Microsoft... You're talking about a company. I mean, where are, we, where are we pushing this morning with Microsoft? What are we? I mean, we're pretty close to $3 trillion, all things considered, right? You jump over to the Analyze tab on the Fundamental tab on the Thinkorswim platform. You're talking about a company, $2.3 trillion. So not exactly Apple, but $2.3 trillion. You're talking about a company with 7.5 billion shares outstanding, okay? You're trading at $310 as of right now. I just want to give some context to how small this acquisition is in relation to Apple share price and the, the volatility that they've recently been trading in. So you're talking about $10 per share price for Apple represents the $75 billion. I'm adding $5 billion extra change, but you get the point, about $10, okay? Maybe even $9 and change is the move that they have spent for Activision. And yeah, I mean, you talk about moves, folks. Just in the last six weeks, Microsoft has traded up $20, down $20, up $20, and down almost $40. On Friday's move alone, you traded up more than $7 from low to high. And on Thursday's move alone, you traded down $16.88. Point being, if they believe this is a recipe for future success, and I imagine they may, because the reach that they're going to have for these game makers, they're building an ecosystem. You're going to try and see Facebook do it. You're going to see Meta do it. Maybe this is even a defensive play. Maybe they're making sure that Facebook doesn't come out of the gate and buy a huge game maker like Activision to solidify their reach for Call of Duty. Maybe they start pushing it out on Oculus or something like that. Uh, nonetheless, there is a big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for these companies, folks, and $70 billion is not a big deal. I mean, look at, it made me think of the company Roblox, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Roblox? How do you pronounce it? Uh, 
quite the haircut for this company. You're going to open at 80 bucks. All right. Now, they're probably getting a little bit of a bid on the news that gaming companies are getting bought up, as they are. There you go. That's the reason they're being hired today, because if somebody's buying Activision for $70 billion, you better believe this company might be in play when they just traded back from 140 to an area that they've been chopping in, chopping around at. I mean, you put the three-year, this is as, as long as they've been public. They went public in March of 21, and you're basically trading at a price. They were trading at $77 in March of 2021. Really accelerated out of the gate in November. Uh, yields probably causing a little bit of a throwback as we start the year, but nonetheless, Roblox made me think of that one. Now, this company, you jump over to the Analyze tab. We're talking about a company valued at $46 billion. They were right next to Act next to Activision. So it would make sense if Activision's higher. You're seeing that on Roblox because I have not been on Roblox, but everything I hear, they're building quite an ecosystem over there, um, almost changing the way gaming takes place. They're valued at $46 billion this morning. If they were going to get purchased, yeah, you're probably talking about $70 billion, something like that. They are going to open up almost $2 this morning for Roblox shares, back to about 81 bucks. Now, let's jump around just to some of the other tech stocks. We got the NASDAQ 100 down almost 1.5%. You got Tesla shares. They're going to open down about $25 at 1023 this morning. We jump to the biggest company in the world, Apple. $3 they're going to lose almost on the open at $2.50, maybe $1.70. 78 they're going to open. We jumped to Google shares this morning. Google opened at about 27.54. All right, let's jump to some of the banks. We kick it off with Goldman Sachs. Expectations were paired for Goldman because of how their competitors did on Friday and still couldn't live up to the expectations. We're down about $16 this morning. You're talking about almost a 4% drop on their numbers. And what's it have to do with, folks? Rising costs. Where are we? There we are. Goldman shares drop after earnings. Missed estimates on surging expenses. Equities trading slowdown. Revenue, not bad, right? $12.64 billion versus $12.08. I mean, if you're a private company and you're supposed to take in, well, if you're supposed to take in $12 billion, bucks, you're all right anyway. But that's almost an extra $600 million in revenue in 90 days. The numbers pretty staggering, but guess what? They couldn't take it to the to the bottom line. Ten eighty one a share versus eleven seventy six. Quarterly profit fell thirteen percent from a year earlier to three point nine four billion, uh, below the estimate. Analysts had anticipated a slowdown in trading would impact the quarter. Equities desk posted revenue this three hundred million below the two point four three billion estimate. That's quite a miss on a percentage basis. Shares down about four percent. Still, company wide revenue in the quarter jumped eight percent from a year earlier to twelve point six four billion, uh, more than the five hundred million above the con more than five hundred million above the consensus estimate there. So they beat by five hundred million on company wide revenue. But equities trading, they miss. They miss on earnings, operating expenses. Here you go, 23%, 7.27 billion in the quarter. Market was looking for 6.77 billion, 23%. Now, as I said, if you're a private business and you're running a business that's rising expenses almost a quarter, I mean, if you're spending a million dollars in the quarter, you've got to spend $1.25 million in the quarter. Yeah, I mean, you know, or you spend $7.27 billion in the quarter. So earnings disappoint, a stark reminder that wage inflation is hitting the banking sector hard. Uh, employees are able to demand significantly higher pay. I think they said, I think I was reading multiple, said, you're talking about almost a 10% pop in, in, in the pay that they were going to? Yeah, they don't lift, list it here. Uh, but nonetheless, there's Goldman down to 364. Now, last week on Friday, we kicked things off with J.P. Morgan really trading lower, and they're trading a little bit lower again today, and that's even with rising yields. Keep that in mind, all right? J.P. Morgan just shaved, what, 14 bucks off of where it was trading at on Thursday. Now, you pull up the daily on J.P. Morgan, all right? We're back to 157. Listen, if, if you're looking for a little bit of cover in this market, all right, for, for the potential for this volatility to persist for the next year, because it is remarkable, folks. There's your NASDAQ 100. I mean, you're talking about giving up, okay? You back it up to July, and we were trading at 15,117. You're talking about giving up six months of action in the NASDAQ 100 in the span of basically the year. Yeah, January 4th, we were trading at a price point of 16,564. What are you down? Yeah, 1,200 points just like that in the span of 14 days. And we give it back just that quick, folks. S&Ps, you're trading at 4609. September, we were trading at 4516. Be careful of these ones across the board. Pretty remarkable, the pullbacks that we've had. Now, you take a look at some of the banks. 
Goldman Sachs, we're going to open at 363. I mean, look how quick the give back is here. You got to go back to March of last year. You were at 356. You're going to be within $7. You were just trading at 426 on Goldman. So what are you going to get? You're going to get a six. You're going to get about a 15% haircut of the highs we had. You're almost going to get a 15% haircut of where we were in August of last year. And you are going to get, I mean, we were trading at 387 in June of last year. We're going to open at 363. And we got the tenure at 1.83%. And we have three to four rate hikes this year. We got a few next year. Uh, I'm looking at banks in the long term, especially looking at banks this morning because they're going to be dealing with rising costs, especially. But if you want a little bit of capital preservation, okay, you want a little bit of the opportunity to achieve some of the gains that might come with a rising yield if they get some of these costs under control, uh, maybe this is a little bit of a gift in terms of the pullback. You're getting some decent action on prices in an environment with yields rising, with cost rising, which definitely could hurt banks. You're seeing it this morning, but something um, something to think about as we proceed in 2022. We got two-way market, folks. We're going to open the market with the opening bell. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S and P kicking off a little bit of negative action, down 51 points right now. You're trading at 4602. We might get a 4500 print in the S and P. We're down 1.1 percent right now. We got the Nasdaq 100 down 1.55 percent, trading 15,000. 345 Dow 
uh, 438 right now. Back to a five-minute chart, seeing the action on the open. You get the Dow accelerating lower. We just dropped about 100 points, just like that in the Dow. S&Ps sitting at about 4603. We get the Russell down about a percent right now at 2137. Bitcoin sitting at about 41,340. Now, it's going to be interesting action when we get down near that 40,000 price point in Bitcoin. Again, I'm going to talk a little bit about crypto. Bitcoin, the option market in crypto in a moment. Uh, as if you need more volatility in that market. Crude up about a dollar right now at 84.29 and gold at 18.15 after some volatility. And let's jump to notes and bonds right now. Tenure negative by about 17 ticks right now. You're talking about a yield. 1.836, 1.836, it's continuing folks. We might see 1.85 today. Very easy that we could see that uh, on that tenure. All right, what else we got going on? Uh, work from home. So check out this one. It's a pretty interesting statistic. Shouldn't be too surprising in terms of what our lives are like right now, but just a realization of how quickly things have changed and how dramatically they have changed. Work from home becoming a permanent part of how jobs are done. Not a surprising uh, statement there. Data shows we can expect about 30 to 40 percent of workdays to be remote long after the pandemic is over. Again, that seems very reasonable. One to two days a week. And in people's heads, folks, with technology where it's at, you know, if you have to be at your desk, you're doing customer service, you're doing sales, you work in a uh, retail environment. Yes, you're going to need to do your job in person. Many, many jobs, especially in the United States and developed economies, uh, you can use technology to do a predominant amount of that work. Now, the statistics to get into it in the second to last week of December, 42.4 percent of U.S. workdays were worked from home. That's according to a monthly survey. Uh, you got economists out there who couldn't get the answers they needed from government data. They're trying to figure it out before the pandemic. Work from home. Just five percent. That's from two out of five to one out of 20 folks. OK, or you could put it, you know, four out of 20 or one out of 20 um, paid work days. Quite a shift from those alone. The share catapulted past 60% in the spring of 2020. Not surprising there. I'm actually surprised it's just 60% as people almost all over the place started working from home. Uh, has held remarkably steady at a bit above 40% since May 2021. Not long after the vaccines became available to all working age Americans. I mean, I would say, folks, now in January of 2022, and I know there have been some reopens and then some shutdowns again. We are very near, if not at the place that many companies are where they want to be. Now, we got to get over this last little surge of hopefully this last wave of Omicron. Uh, but once we get past this, I imagine that either companies have made the decision to say you got to come back into the office. You've seen some of the Wall Street banks try and get that done. They've had to pair some of that back because of Omicron. But once we get over this last wave, if bosses want people back in the office, they're going to put that out there. They're going to come back wherever we fall in the next month or two with people working from home as some type of bridge. I imagine that's where we go from there. In the first week of January, office occupancy, just 27.9% of the pre-pandemic norm, 27.9%. Percent. Uh, that's down from 40.6 percent at the beginning of December. So we have some Omicron going there, okay, in a big way. Not just COVID. Mid December, just 11 percent of employed Americans reported doing any work remotely because of the coronavirus pandemic. That's that means that only one out of 10 are doing it because of the pandemic. It's not just COVID, okay. Uh, education gap. That's going to be a big one, of course. 51.9% uh, of those with a bachelor degree or higher said they could work from home, while only 11.1% of those with a high school degree or less could. One of the great things about education, folks, one of the things I'm so lucky for and fortunate for that my dad believes in education and was always pushing his kids, myself, my sister, to get a great education is the options it gives you in life. You don't have to go, um, you know, straight to Wall Street. You don't have to go get a job ASAP. You might if you take on 200 grand in debt, which I would not advise. That's a whole another story. But one of the great thing is you have choice in education, folks, no matter what you do with your life. So, you know, whether it's yourself, your kids out there, you get them educated, they have choices. And unfortunately, you're seeing that play out right now where the uneducated people in society predominantly don't have as many choices. And right now, you don't have those choices to work remotely. 11.1% with a high school degree or less uh, having that option. Most of the times, um, they're in a, you know, whether it's a service environment, um, physical labor, whatever it is. 
full timers in the survey that the Census Bureau warned that unre um, was unreliable because of low response data during the pandemic. Okay, so there's your disclaimer. 15.8 percent of employed Americans said they work primarily from home in 2020, up from 5.7. Nonetheless, some pretty star harsh uh, statistics of the world changing in pretty dramatic fashion out there. All right, let's get into a little crypto. So we got Bitcoin down at 41,000. All right, Bitcoin option shift as some bulls calling 40,000 on the de demand for put versus call options is easing. Uh, yeah, you got a, a few players in here they're talking to. Uh, the world's largest crypto rebounded last week. It's above 40,000. Now, this article was from January 15th, okay? It's already had a little bit of a pullback over the weekend since it was written, but you're down about 40%. 40,000 is a critical area that they're talking about here. Now, what they do talk about, though, is that the bottom of 40,000 is a view echoed by many analysts in the famously optimistic world of crypto, okay? Now, Bitcoin's reverse risk, a measure of confidence of long-term Bitcoin holders is currently lower than it was at the coin's last bottom of July, 2021, and now stands in the buy zone, which could give more weight to the indication that this is a bottom. Now, boy, it's a bottom until it isn't, though, folks. And if it's not a bottom, then where is the bottom? That's the one worry here. You see 40,000, you see 50,000 thrown around, you see 100,000 thrown around. Um, yeah, nonetheless, we'll leave it at that because, uh, you know, all I would say is if you are in there at 40,000, set yourself a stop. Because unless you want to ride this thing down to five or 10,000, which is totally possible, do not let it go below such a critical area if you're looking for a bounce. Now, we'll keep on the crypto theme. Crypto.com suspends withdrawals after unauthorized activity. Buyer beware in the crypto sector, folks. This is the biggest player out there almost. I mean, they're, they're Matt Damon and all of his ads, right? Crypto.com suspends withdrawals after unauthorized activity. Traders report suspicious transactions on the platform. The customers will have to reset security measures. They basically shut it down completely because they didn't know what was going on. So deposits and withdrawals, this doesn't happen in banks, folks, all right? They have some kinks, to put it lightly, to work out of the system. Uh, the crypto wallet provider and trading platform said in a Twitter post that measures um, that the measure was temporary to allow it improve to improve security and would resume activity once the update was complete the company added that all funds are safe well they're safe until they're not safe folks and if they're not regulated they're not safe that's the bottom line this company goes bk i don't think they're regulated i don't know where they're based but i'm guessing that they're not fdic insured and i'm saying that almost as sarcastic as i can several users had reported that their cryptocurrencies at times equating to tens of thousands of dollars had disappeared from their account in recent days um no comment from the company technical issues on crypto trading platforms become commonplace crypto.com 10 million customers one of the most prominent platforms in the u.s uh, yeah, they're going to be on the Staples Center in L.A., 700 million bucks. They have a huge blitz going on in terms of Matt Damon everywhere, and they can't even control it on crypto. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Quite a start to the short trading week. We got the S&Ps down 1.3% to kick things off. NASDAQ 100 down 1.6%. The Dow really accelerating right out of the gate. We're down 1.4%. The Dow as well. And the Russell down 1.3%. You jump over, as they're saying, hi-ho silver in the den. That's right. Look at that silver chart, man. From 2290 up to 2358. We're trading right now up 2% on silver, up about 45 cents. You jump over to gold, actually negative on the session, but we had some volatility in both directions on gold as well, up to about 1820. You get back some of those gains. We're sitting at about 1812 in that gold contract. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Let's see how they're trading. Good old Apple can't hold a good company down, man. Remarkable how strong Apple has been, even in the face of everything going on with the tech stocks. You got Apple trading higher on the open. You're down just about half a percent. Not bad when you got basically the entire indices, the entire market down 1.5%. We jump to Microsoft. The market actually liking that deal. They sure are, because Microsoft's getting quite a bid from 300 right there at about 815. Now, check this out, right? I was just talking about how little that money means now it doesn't mean nothing okay it's 70 billion dollars that belong to the shareholders but you have an equity right now that is seven dollars and 40 cents above the lows you had this morning my goodness you were at 302 and change you've gained 35 billion dollars just since where we were trading at at 9 30 13 minutes ago you can see that this share price has the ability to trade uh very quickly when you're talking about a company valued at 2.3 trillion dollars you spend uh, Seventy billion dollars. Yes, that's substantial. But to put it in context, I mean that would be like a company valued at two hundred and thirty billion dollars. Okay, valuing a company at seven billion dollars, that'd be like a you know it just goes down and down, right? I mean not a big number. That'd be a company valued at twenty three billion dollars, valuing buying a company at seven hundred million. That'd be a company valued at two point three billion, buying a company worth seventy million. Right? That'd be a company of 230 million buying a company worth $7 million. I've taken it to an extreme, but you get the point. I think it's a great acquisition because these companies are going to begin really entrenching the ecosystem that they're going to try and build uh, when VR and gaming becomes a huge part. I mean, gaming, folks, I tell you, I've said it many times. I've got the Oculus Quest 2. I have very little free time in my life right now between work and play and family and a young child, uh, young kids, period. Um, but it's pretty cool. And gaming, it's it's kind of changed the way I look at it. Just looking in one VR headset and the technology is just going to keep going from there, folks, because the technology, 
is only going to vastly increase and it's exponential the function that's going to take place and it's very hard for our minds to imagine that exponential function but i imagine if you're a microsoft shareholder you got to be excited that they spend that kind of money you got the nasdaq 100 down 1.6 percent today and you only got microsoft down less than one percent microsoft outperforming the market when you're out there spending 70 billion dollars for a company like activision and i imagine activision ATVI is their symbol, sitting pretty. Yeah, sitting pretty at about 85 bucks, pulling back a little bit from that number in terms of where you spiked. You jump over to the Analyze tab. I think we're probably sitting at about 67, 66 billion dollars. Where are we at? 66.4 billion dollars. So a little bit of leeway there to the upside that this deal doesn't go through completely. Uh, but I would not be out there buying Activision looking for those last few pennies if somehow that deal does not go through and you pull back to 65 bucks like nothing. All right, let's jump over to Mr. Elon Musk and Tesla. Not bad, down about 1.5%, sitting at 1,033. Jump over to Google shares this morning. Google down 2.5% so far. All right, Shopify steps up the China expansion through a tie-up with e-commerce giant JD.com. Shopify, one of the more volatile stocks during the pandemic. You rise and you fall. We pull up the weekly, 1762 was the price point just on November 15th. This is what we talk about, folks. We've talked about, I mean, you talk about the carnage done to many of the NASDAQ equities. Meanwhile, you have the NASDAQ coming in at all-time highs. This is one of them. From 1762, we're down to 1,070. You give up another 3%. You are back to prices in Shopify, folks, that you were trading at in June of 2020. Still elevated, though. Because we're talking about back to almost 400 bucks coming in to 2020. You're pricing about 600 bucks in February of 2020, the true beginning of the pandemic. So still quite a premium from there. Shopify is a great platform, folks, TFNN. We use them. Uh, I imagine they will be around in the future in a big way. And tying up, you know, anything that allows them to do business in China a great deal. Not sure why the fundamentals are popping up. They definitely would for a company like Shopify. Uh, but nonetheless, they're teaming up with JD. JD said it's going to open an accelerated channel for brands on Shopify to begin selling in China and will handle price conversion and logistics from the U.S. to China. Interesting one. Maybe we'll start having to sell some uh, newsletters over on the Shopify platform over in China. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if uh, good old G will like uh, some of the action that we're putting out on our newsletters. Uh, nonetheless. All right, jumping over to oil. Satellite photos show aftermath of an Abu Dhabi oil site attack. Uh, so this one, Tuesday, satellite photos obtained by the Associated Press on Tuesday appear to show the aftermath of a fatal attack on an oil facility in the capital city of the United Arab Emirates by Yemen's uh, Houthi, Houthi rebels. Uh, the attack, they, it's a long-running war. You got things escalating over there. And you have the attack going and the fear, disruptions to the global energy supplies after the Abu Dhabi attack pushed benchmark crude to its highest price levels in years. So we jump over to crude. That's a little bit of context on some of the news driving that market higher. There it is. We put it back on a 15 minute. So there you see the volatility to the upside up to about 85.16 this morning, still sitting at about 84.32 uh, as crude continues to run in a big way. And that put an even a greater lift in terms of a disruption possible with war going on in the Middle East in Abu Dhabi. All right. What else we got going on up here? Let's see what kind of headlines I got pulled up here. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to NFT cryptos real quick. Uh, whoops. Where are we? Nope. That's not the one I wanted. This is. Soros Winklevoss invest in an NFT creator now valued at five billion dollars. So they raised three hundred and fifty nine million. Not bad. The company's valuation has grown from just one billion in July. This is where things really start to get crazy, folks. When you're talking about a company valued at billion in July and all of a sudden it's January and they're out there raising three hundred and fifty nine million. I mean, that would have been almost thirty six percent of the company in July. Well, it's not anymore because they're valuing it at five billion dollars now. Um, just to remark you, so Anamoka Brands Corp, not really familiar, but they are becoming a big player in a big way. Um, so blockchain industry players have seen their valuations balloon over the past year. You got FTX Trading Limited hitting $25 billion in October. You got OpenSea going past $13 billion and Animo Anamoka. Uh, they just raised October 2.2, .2 and just like that, boom, they're at $5 billion. They got a bunch of players in here. I mean, look at the list of players. The latest... Fundraising was led by existing backer Liberty and also included, you got Sequoia China, Kingsway Pacific, Sea Ventures. Um, no.
I'm just reading through. So they are, yes, this is what I want to get to. So they are a Hong Kong based firm and they have been signing up popular brands. And this is where they've been doing deals with, whether it's football clubs over in Europe, racing competitions, entertainment franchises as partners for the creation and distribution of NFT. So they're partnering with all these four firms and they are gonna be pushing out NFTs, right? You get a big football club over in Europe, something like that, you're pushing out NFTs. It's a brave new world, folks, NFTs, but 1 billion, 2.2 billion, 5 billion, just like that over the course of a couple months. Bitcoin trading at 41,380. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in a stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, a couple of stories to finish it up. How about this? 555.55 carat black diamond lands in Dubai. They're going to be auctioning that off. Where did it come from, folks? They believe it come from space. Space, a space diamond. 555 plus carats, the Enigma rare gem was showing off on Monday to journalists. They're going to be auctioning that off. It's expected to go for 6.8 million U.S., 5 million British pounds at least. We'll see what that goes for. Interesting uh, out there. Black diamond from space. Pretty cool. All right. What else do we have going on here? Here we go. This is what I want to talk about finally. Alcohol. Uh, now, boy, you want to talk about a, a demise, folks. Sam Adams. Down another 1.1% today. This thing dropped out of bed on Friday as well. Dropped out of bed all year 
from 1349. Remarkable that you are back too, folks. Prices that we were trading at in August of 2019 for Sam Adams, while they were riding the hard seltzer run to highs and lows. Um, but pretty cool alcohol. Now, I say pretty cool, pretty interesting. Alcohol, folks, I think is literally one of the worst drugs that humans consume. Period. Talking about all drugs because of the way it's glorified, because of the way it's socialized, because of the way it's just entrenched in all facets of society almost sometimes. It's normalized to a point that other drugs are not, which allows you to think that it's normal to use it in excess. I've done it myself. Many people have. All right. And you can enjoy alcohol socially responsibly. All that stuff. OK, I do. But with that in mind, we drink way too much alcohol overall. Uh, but the statistics here are pretty fascinating. So off premises in black. On premises in blue, we're back, folks. Everybody's back to drinking just the way they were prior to the pandemic. When things shut down, you had off premises alcohol skyrocket, on premise drop. Now, what's interesting is off premise sales, we're holding above. We're holding way above. All right, since 2019, beer and ready to drink, what's that purple line? That's ready to drink. Do you know what that is? That is hard seltzers and pre-mixed cocktails, folks. They took a dive like we haven't seen, man, when you're talking about on-premise, just through the through the, the, the um, floor, excuse me. But nonetheless, alcohol is back, shouldn't be too surprising, uh, but be safe out there, folks. Alcohol, use it moderately, don't drink and drive, and uh, be aware, it is a drug in a big way. These markets, boy, they need some, uh, some vitamins or something, man. S&P down 1.6%, folks. Basil Chapman's up next. Larry. Steve, Dave, Tom O'Brien, my dad this afternoon. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.